Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about how to choose an online community. So it's my Friday um, networking tip. My name is Charlotte Habiger. I am a connector. I connect you with people, resources, and experiences to help you achieve your life projects. I mostly speak about networking, social media, uh, social marketing, connections, collaborations, and how to build your business through human connections. So today I wanted to quickly speak about how to choose an online community that fits you, uh, that aligns with your mission, and that fits your goals, your professional goals. So we're talking about a business, a project, or an organization that you want to promote, and how to choose a group to do so. I'm going to answer a couple of questions here, which are why, what, where, and when. <laughs> Perhaps even a who. <laughs> Makes it easy, right, to have a couple quick ways to go about a subject. So the first one I always want to bring up is why. Why do you want to join or be active in an online community? An online community is mostly, I'm talking about Facebook groups, but also other communities. So any online discussion forum, groups, uh, platforms where you can connect with people in a group. So why do you want to join or become active, more active in a group, a community? And I'm not talking about all the groups or communities you're part of. You can remain part of multiple groups and communities out of you know interest and curiosity. However, I really recommend being um, active in at least a couple ones that you choose to a couple times a week, you know, even daily if you want to, uh, even a couple of minutes a day. Those are the groups. Those are the groups I'm talking about, the online communities. So which are the ones that you want to participate in and how would you choose it first you need to know why what is your goal what, what are you doing it for uh is it out of uh, service to the people who are in the group is it out of wanting to have more followers if you want more followers why Twenty thousand followers are completely useless if you don't know why so why are you interested in knowing what kind of group or online community would be good for you the second one is what so what is an online community like i just said it's a group a facebook group it can be a um, messenger group. Uh, there are some that are very active as well uh, on LinkedIn or Meetup. Yeah, you have a new circle communities as well, discussion forums. I'm talking about which are the ones that you want to be active in, noticed, seen, uh, involved. I often like to compare, like I've told you before, a group to a community center. So what is the place? What is the space that you want to be active in? Now, where? So these are the different places are, um, I'm going to talk mostly about Facebook groups because it's my main experience. However, there are others, like I just said. And um, where? Where do you find these communities? There's a couple of different ways. So it could be haphazardly going through your feed or someone posts something that's inviting you to a group. Um, someone invites you to a group. You can also do it on purpose purposely. So you can look by hashtags, you can look, you can search by um, topic. Although some groups may not be findable, <laughs> they might be private and not visible. So another way to look for groups where would be to follow the people that you already trust, the people that you're already getting content from either free or paid and get involved in their groups. That way there's a giving, a giving and giving back. They've taught you are either for free or paid content, and you are giving back as a member of that person's community. You know it will be worth it. You'll go further and maybe have some ways to apply what you've learned. So that's the where. Now the when. Once you do have a group, you look at the different groups and you know why, you know what kind of group you're looking for and where, now it's the when. So when do you participate? How does this work? Because one of the best ways to know if a group is for you or aligned with you is to be a member of it. Honestly, if you start with someone you are trusted, you trust in and that you follow their content and their teaching, maybe about how to create courses, you probably have a good idea that that community is for you. If not, you might want to test it, try it out. And you can also either quit, leave after a while or simply not be an active member. We all know as group uh, facilitators that a good number of our members will not be active. That's a normal thing. I think even 5%, Facebook says 5% of active members is really good. So that brings me to the next point. When you're choosing a group, if your goal is to be seen, to be heard, 
and to have results, which may be a business connection, uh, collaborators, team members, et cetera, you may want to start, start, you may want to aim for a smaller group rather than a larger group. And follow me here. A lot of people will look at the number of members of a group to decide to participate in it. Look really well. If you're in a group that has dozens, uh, tens of thousands of members, and there's only four or five comments or even 50 comments under the posts, that's a small, very small percentage of people who are seeing posts and commenting. If you're in a smaller group that is more targeted to what you're looking for, either for your own industry, so if you're a course creator or course creator group, or for your target market, your target groups, your target audience, so maybe people who um, are looking to learn the skill that you teach, there's a better chance that they will see you in a smaller, more active, more targeted group than a large, wide, multiple tens of thousands people in the group, but not active. So how can you tell? You can often see how many people see the post, or if it's a video, you can check videos. Videos show the number of views. And um, you can get a feel for how many people in the group are active. So in a group with 500 people, you could actually get more views, more reactions, more results than in a group of 10,000 people. If there's more people who are active, if there's 60% of members on the smaller group who are active, you end up having more than if you have 1% on the larger group. It's just, you know, math. Now, the when was how do you participate in those groups? Once you've chosen a group or you're testing groups, make sure you go at least three times. I would recommend at least two or three times a week. Ideal would be every day for five minutes, five minutes. I'm not talking about scrolling. I actually do not recommend scrolling ever. <laughs> it's not an intentional way of using social media. You can get distracted. You answer, you, it, there's a risk of answering um, haphazardly to questions and not getting the context because you're not in the group. So if you are a member or if you're testing out a, uh, an online community, go to the actual URL of that group check out the guides, check out the, um, you know, the guides, the units, uh, if there are any, the description for the group, who founded it, who is the administrator, follow those people, network with those people, and go to the actual group a couple times a week, even every day if you can for five minutes, and comment, like, post, if it's allowed according to the schedule, the editorial schedule of that group. That is the way that you will know if that group is for you, and you will benefit the most as well from that. So who, who is really important because on the other side of the screen in that group are people and they're like you and they, they everyone cry, you know, craves for human connections and growing their businesses. So who are the people that you're connecting with on those groups? Once you're in a group, you're connecting with people. You're not connecting with a group of people. <laughs> Just a little uh, transition and thinking here. You're connecting with individuals in a group setting. Again, going back to the community center example that I gave earlier, you're in a, uh, an event as if it were physical and you're connecting with people. So individual messaging, not cold calling, not copy and paste. Never write anybody without checking their profile first. If you do that to me, <laughs> I will not like you <laughs> that right away anyway. So that's about it. Um, when you want to choose a group, of course, there's a whole bunch of different ways of doing it. I would recommend having just a couple that you're really active in, much more efficient than being active for a while in one and dropping out and going to the other one. It just kind of looks weird too to people who are regular on those groups. If you want suggestions, I have a whole other live that I gave about 10, my top 10 uh, communities that I recommend. If you have others to recommend, here is the place to put them in the comments. I hope you liked this um, Friday networking tip. Look forward to your suggestions for fu future tips. And now I'm going to do the French version of this video. So take care. See you soon.